So a couple of things I'd like to say about uh, Martin is that we share a, a common hero, a lady by the name of Roma Mitchell, who was knighted on the same day as my father, was a very close friend of Martin's. And uh, I know he, particularly in a recent article in the newspaper, uh, spoke so highly of a woman that many of us would have met and perhaps enjoyed her humour, wit and wisdom, some of which has rubbed off on Martin. Perhaps, maybe also, not malt, but a love of a good glass of South Australian Shiraz. The, the, the other part of the double act, if you like, because we now have not just the Lord Mayor, we've got two for the price of one. We have a very keen uh, Lady Mayoress. Genevieve, in her own right, uh, is a wonderful business uh, person, uh, but is also working very closely with this club on our Shining a Light on Homelessness project, which will be launched shortly. I think that's enough from me. I'd like to introduce and warmly welcome to have a few words with us, the Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Martin Hazy. Thank you, Peter. This is the uh, time-honoured tradition whereby the Lord Mayor now sings for his supper. Adelaide City Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and we pay respect to Elders past and Elders present. Lady Mayoress, Genevieve to Sarah Hazy, President Peter Neal, Rotarians, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Also a special note to Stephen Haynes, Rotarian, Acting CEO of the Adelaide City Council, of which we are very pleased to have a Rotarian as our Acting CEO of the Adelaide City Council. And like any acting, good Acting CEO, uh, Mr Haynes attempted to write my speech for me today, <laughs> of which I will now proceed and flagrantly ignore, like all Lord Mayors typically would. Indeed, that is another time-honoured tradition which I will preserve from over the last 175 years. Um, I am very pleased to be here with you today. Thank you. It's a great honour and thank you to be uh, formally inducted as an honorary Rotarian. That also is a great honour. So thank you, Peter, and thank you, members. Thank you, Rotarians. Um, as we would all know, the City of Adelaide has taken some great strides forward uh, in recent years, and many of those have been in terms of our place and our standing, not only in the local community, but the national community and also the world community. Um, not without challenges though, not without challenges. And um, I, I am, and I was chatting with Peter earlier, uh, we are both half glass full people. We like to see opportunity, um, but we also need to be pragmatic in terms of how we address those opportunities and how we capitalise on them. So I'm going to share a little bit about that in my brief speech today, but I'm going to share with you um, a brief introduction about myself and my history, and I think it's everyone's right to have a, a good understanding of who their Lord Mayor of the day is and what he or her has done and what they're going to bring to the table. I'd like to share with you my thoughts on uh, where to from now, where to from now for the City of Adelaide in terms of uh, what is our vision, um, because we have a largely newly elected council. There was quite a change last November um, whereby there were six newly elected members of the Adelaide City Council and there were six re-elected members of the uh, Adelaide City Council and we've formed into the a very very good working unit, which I'm very pleased to say. Also a quick chat about the fact that, um, uh, like Rotary here is 91 years old, I believe, uh, the Adelaide City Council this year is celebrating 175 years. Um, and something I'm currently investigating is that might make us the first democratically elected uh, government in South Australia. Uh, 1840, uh, we have a great long history and a great long heritage here in the city of Adelaide. We're certainly the first municipal government in Australia, and many people don't know that, but the Adelaide City Council was the first municipal government in Australia, and I had the great pleasure of sharing that story in Canberra on Monday to an Australian Local Government Association group of about 800 mayors. You can only imagine 800 mayors and deputy mayors in one room at one time, can't you? Indeed. So, um, but that was a great honour too, to share that story. I'm just looking at this duck with some ominous Someone, someone, someone will explain this to me later. <laughs> anyway, less about me, more about Rotary. Um, 
91 years old, well done to everyone. Um, what a great history, um, what a great legacy and what a great future, um, I believe, that Rotary Club of Adelaide has. Um, 175 members on that level alone, well done, and I hope that's an accurate statistic or thereabouts. Uh, largest club in South Australia, well done again, and particularly well done on your whole charter and your ethos of service and community. Um, I think that's absolutely wonderful. And service is something, I like to put um, service back into public service um, over my term of uh, local government uh, because I believe that we are an expression of the will of the people and um, we've got a job to do and uh, that's exactly what we will do. A quick pricey about myself. Um, born in Adelaide, 1965, in the founding year of my wife's native country of Singapore, which was founded in uh, 1965 by Lee Kuan Yew, as many of you would know who recently passed away. Um, my father was a lawyer uh, and then subsequently thereafter a judge. My godmother was Dame Roma Mitchell, so from a very young age I uh, had a very close association with Dame Roma. My father and Dame Roma had a law firm together with uh, Ted Mulligan and Doreen Davey over the years, um, and this would have been in the uh, 1970s. Uh, I didn't take the course of law, I took the, the course of business, I guess, and uh, sometimes that brings it with it great opportunities and sometimes that brings it with it the occasional hard knocks. And I've certainly had both, but I, I don't regret a minute of it because it's those experiences which have shaped me in order to do the job that I'm doing today, and I'll share some of that too. But um, my career history predominantly was in retail. So I started my first retail store in 1992, grew that into a 17-store chain around Australia, um, employed a few hundred people, and uh, was manufacturing in Australia, Indonesia, China, and India, um, and got that to a reasonably large size, whereby I was fortunate enough to sell out to a publicly listed company at that time, and uh, enjoyed every minute, albeit, being in retail, which is a fairly rough and tumble game, I experienced the highs and lows along that journey, but um, it ended well and that was a terrific story. Subsequent to then, I, um, my first entree, I guess, into Adelaide City Council in a non-elected capacity was that of uh, General Manager, the Rundable Management Authority, whereby over the years I served as a board member of the authority, which is a subsidiary of council, and I also served as a general manager. So I have been, I like to say that I've been lurking around Adelaide City Council since 2008, but not until last year, until which time I was in a uh, elected capacity. My wife and uh, a small team of Merry Bandits also have another company which we do advisory work, funnily enough, for local governments and also for large commercial, mostly retail property groups um, around Australia and in Malaysia and in Singapore. I, uh, after selling my business, I decided it was time to get myself more educated, so I did an MBA, and uh, I have since been working part-time teaching MBA students about entrepreneurship, strategic marketing, and globalisation, three things which I'm quite passionate about, and I'm continuing to do so in a very part-time capacity whilst I'm Lord Mayor. Had the pleasure of uh, being on a number of boards, um, Property Council, Main Street Committee, um, Adelaide Convention Bureau, South Australian Youth Arts Board, and I was the chairman of the Beta Birdwood, um, which is the historic car run, which many of you would know. And I'm, uh, one of my great passions is uh, historic motoring. And um, we all have our weaknesses, and that one's mine. Um, I'd like to talk with you about, um, really, the vision for the city of Adelaide. And I, I think we have a profound opportunity in front of us to put paid to our almost endless comparisons about Adelaide with Melbourne and Sydney and Perth and Brisbane and Hobart and Darwin and any other town or city we can find in Australia, but I think we can kind of put our heads above the clouds and say, where does Adelaide sit on the world stage? What are we deeply good at? And then how can we sell it to the world? How can we use that as a source of competitive advantage? Now, my view is that I'm deeply city-centric, so I'm going to speak much more so from a city perspective, but some of these analogies could certainly apply to the state of South Australia. But um, I think we have a very strong knowledge economy. I think we're a smart group of people. I think we're an educated group of people. I think we're a hardworking people. I think we're an industrious people. And those types of uh, attributes, um, I think, served us well when this state was founded. We were founded on all those virtues. We were founded by entrepreneurs. Um, and somewhere along the way, we maybe lost our identity in that space a little bit. And I think now it's 
well overdue to get that space back. And I, um, as a city, we've done many great things. As a state, we've done many great things. We've done many great things in terms of social advancement, cult multicultural advancement, social inclusion, um, looking after those in need. I think we do these things incredibly well. Rotary does these things incredibly well. Our greatest challenge sitting in front of us now, I believe, is an economic one. And this is not an either-or discussion, and nor should it be. We need to continue to do what we do well in the social and the cultural space, but we have to address the economic opportunities that sit in front of us. And I firmly look at that one as a glass half full endeavour, not a glass half empty endeavour. We are inherently good at things like aquaculture and agriculture. We're good at things like research and development. We're good at things like education. Uh, we're good at things like, we're getting better at things like kind of international tourism and conferencing and a whole range of sporting endeavours. Look at what we've got here. We do these things well, but do we sell it well enough? Do we sell ourselves well enough? Do we differentiate ourselves well enough on the world stage so that we tell more people about it and they come here and they want to experience which what we know and what we love so well? That is one of our great challenges. And I think our challenge now is to underwrite the future prosperity and sustainability of the City of Adelaide and indeed the state of South Australia. And prosperity is not purely a monetary endeavour, although that's our default mechanism for thinking about prosperity, but it's also about the prosperity of our health, um, our multicultural society, our sense of belonging, our sense of confidence, our sense of pride that we have about our city and we have about our state and how, we're, how we project ourselves to the world. I'd like to see us um, projecting ourselves to the world as a prosperous city in so many ways, uh, including um, improving our monetary and economic prosperity. And we don't have these frank and fearless conversations very often, and I think we should be having a lot more of them. Adelaide indeed is incredibly livable. We love that, we cherish that. It's a deeply livable city, and we should, must always honour that. But in the same time, we need to be accelerating our credentials on an economic platform. In order to do so, I believe, in order to put paid to our comparisons to other Australian cities, which do wonderful things in their own right, we need to be more outward looking. We need to be more engaging with the world. And the city of uh, Adelaide has five sister city relationships around the world, and I've just got back from one, which is the city of Qingdao in China. State of South Australia has a sister state relationship or a state province relationship with Shandong, 100 million people, and we have a sister city relationship, Adelaide, with Qingdao, 10 million people. And I had the great honour of attending the um, international trade delegation, which many would have read about, uh, the week before last. And although I must say that in local government, people say that one year is like dog years, meaning that one year is like seven. I feel like I was in China three months ago. It was only two weeks ago. But the opportunity there is quite profound. And in China, in order for business to do business with business, it sometimes needs to be endorsed by government. And that's why there was such a large, there were 12 mayors there from metropolitan Adelaide, including myself. There was a premier and there was four ministers, um, plus a number of senior bu bureaucrats, CEOs, and of course about 130 business people who accompanied us. We were there to open doors for them. That's our job. Now this is all about, of course, agriculture, aquaculture, and all the things that the state does well, but this is also about education, professional services, the arts, and a, a range of things which we do astoundingly well, which are incredibly city-centric, and how we can engage with our sister city. And the mayor of Qingdao said to me after spending two days together at dinner, he whispered in my ear, he said, are you ready for us? And I paused and I said, with respect, sir, what do you mean? He said, do you have enough hotel rooms? Is your port big enough? Do you have enough shipping containers? What's your infrastructure like? Because he said, if I turn on the tap, you'll feel it. And I thought that was very telling. So we have to be very strategic. Um, I think this is a giant export opportunity for South Australia. Um, case in point, there are some very good people in the city of Adelaide who are water management experts. And a law was passed recently in Shandong whereby those in the water management game, sorry, those in industry, directors of companies would be held personally liable as a director should they be fouling the water table. Now this has put water management experts in hot, 
demand. And I could just see this all playing out in front of me. So we are exporting our professional services to China as well as our goods and our agriculture, which is very, very important. So business plays an incredibly important role in terms of projecting Adelaide and indeed South Australia as a more outward looking city. I also think this feeds back to our city brand in terms of what do people associate with the city of Adelaide when they think about it? What is the first word that comes to their mind about the city of Adelaide? And I guess if I look at my own lens, and we all look at that through our own bias, but I label myself for want of a better word as a progressive conservative or a conservative progressive. I'm not sure which one, it depends on the day, but I'm certainly both. Meaning I cherish the deep history of the city of Adelaide, but I know we have to forge forward frank and fearlessly to engage with the world to underwrite the next 175 years of the City of Adelaide, uh, of which we've enjoyed a wonderful last 175 years. We need to leverage technology. We've signed a deal with a very large technology giant called Cisco, and they've named us a lighthouse city, which means they want to trial all of their new technologies around city management with us. And I think we've got to get into it, and I think we've got to do it, because that can become, technology and innovation can become central to our brand identity also. We've also got an opportunity to gradually grow our population in the city of Adelaide. Um, what we've had is growth in supply. We've seen more hotels come up, we've seen more residences come up, we've seen more cafes, restaurants, entertainment, entertainment venues, hospitals, Adelaide Ovals, convention centres, the list just goes on in terms of the growth of public and private infrastructure in the city of Adelaide. But to underwrite, especially something like our early evening economy and our restaurants and our cafes, a few more people living in the city would not go astray. This term of council has four pillars which we're focusing on on your behalf. We're very focused on retaining, if not accelerating, the people experience. We believe that local government is all about people. That can be interpreted on so many levels, but our lens needs to be about people. We need to move council closer to business in every way, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're also, we've put $35 million in our next financial year's budget into basic infrastructure. And that's all the unglamorous local government things like roads, footpaths, lighting, verges, parklands, all these things which is incumbent upon us to improve. So we're going to improve our roads, we've already started. And also, we're quite focused on sustainability, and that involves climate change. And I was speaking about that in Canberra on um, Monday. We do this together. We do this by engaging very closely with our community. We do this through forming partnerships with industry, with state government, sometimes even with other local governments. And in that score, I'm working very collaboratively with neighbouring mayors and other mayors throughout Adelaide and indeed South Australia. It's not a solo effort. Our cultural diversity is one of our key strengths and must continue to be so. Um, Adelaide is a tolerant, inclusive, interesting society and must remain so in so many ways. I think that's absolutely critical and important. So celebrating our cultural relations and celebrating uh, all of our uh, unique cultures which make up our society is very, very important. 175 years. It's a great time to be the Lord Mayor, to have such a wonderful birthday. And we are doing a range of things over this, this year which will culminate between August and October. We will be have very large community events, one of which will be in Elder Park, where everybody's invited to celebrate what is the first local government in, in, in Australia, which is uh, absolutely wonderful including we have a time capsule at Town Hall and every time we do something of uh, merit over this year we pop it in the time capsule and that'll be buried out the front of Town Hall, I've been led to believe. So um, thank you Rotarians. I'm a great honour, great honour to be uh, inducted as an honorary Rotarian and uh, keep up your terrific work for City of Adelaide and for South Australia. Well done. Thank you. Question? The Lord Mayor has kindly agreed to answer a few questions. There's a few good questions Dorothy Dix has solved in the audience. No, it's an open forum and we've got a few hands up. But before we do, as a last meeting, regular meeting gesture, we have a raving, uh, sorry, roving microphone. <laughs> and so, Tom, would you make your way over to this side of the room because uh, nobody can hear Frank O'Neill.
We'll deal with you later, presently. <laughs> and Lord Mayor, thank you for that uh, insight into our history and your vision for the future. I'm conscious that we're a city of uh, maybe 30,000. Uh, you mentioned we're twinning with the city of 10 million. What is happening in terms of local government reform that can actually make us a decent sized city? <laughs> Um, interesting, and thank you for the question, Frank. The, I got all the mayors together when we were in Qingdao, and I said, I think it would be best if we all didn't talk about, quote, unquote, our city. And they said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, when you talk about your city and your population of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000, whatever that may be, the mayor you're speaking to will point to that street and say, I think I've got 30,000 in that street. So we had to play a team game very much. Um, there is the in inevitable debate about local government amalgamations, and of course there is, and that waxes and wanes over the years. But I think the bigger discussion is about mayors of various uh, councils um, working together, often sharing resources, sharing knowledge, um, and I think the Lord Mayor's role plays some leadership in that. Um, the Lord Mayor's role is generally denoted as first amongst equals when it comes to mayors. Um, so we, as soon as I was elected, I uh, reached out to the LGA, the local government associations, and said, "Look, local government association," and said, "Look, I will work with you on every level I need to." Um, and uh, I think that's very, very important. So um, we need a unified voice. More than any time in our history, we need a unified voice um, <clears throat> between councils and also between uh, local government and state government, um, because we, as a state, have challenges which are considerably bigger than us individually. You're correct. Our voting population is in the order of 22,800. Our daytime visitor um, quantum is about 220,000 in the city of Adelaide. But they're not all our voters. But we have to, on some degree, look at them as our guests. So I think it's a philosophical view. Um, and I think it's very much a team spirit type of approach. We had one more over here, I think Rex. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I was wondering if the difference between Stephen's speech and your speech, what would be the biggest difference between the two? Well, ser serendipity often happens. I think we probably ended up fairly similar, didn't we, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, the contract will be extended. <laughs> <laughs> Another question? David Seaton. If we look at the um, the larger vision for the city of Adelaide in terms of our need to, you know, stamp our mark on the world stage, I think that's something we squarely share with the state government. Um, the Premier led that delegation to China, um, and I was right behind it the first time I heard about it. The um, state government of South Australia has a China strategy, it has a Southeast Asia strategy, it has an India strategy. Um, and it's working a lot more aggressively in the last year than what I've ever seen in terms of kind of um, finding our place on the world stage. So on that level, in terms of a shared vision, I think we're right on the same page. Um, there will always be the occasional tussle. Many of you would know about a relatively recent event called Oban, um, but we found water found its level. Water found its level, uh, and that was through having a good relationship um, and working out a mutually agreeable compromise which was going to work for the city of Adelaide, save the parklands, and um, uh, keep the government um, delivering on their promise of improved transport infrastructure. So sometimes it gets a little bit delicate when you need to thread the needle in these types of jobs, but you've got to be committed to doing it, and uh, that we did. So I think largely we're on the same page, which is a very enjoyable place to be. One quick one, one quick answer, Steve Larkins. Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Uh, I guess my question is the extension of days, and that's the extent to which we constitute a city state. <coughs> <laughs>
think they're having a go at you, Steve. Yeah. Uh, I can't help but reflect on the fact that I was over with friends on the West Coast on the long weekend. No rain since the start of May. Mm. Uh, not putting the crop in the ground. Uh, getting out of bed in the dark after 7 o'clock. I just wonder, and this is not your particular issue, but rather it, it does require a pretty holistic view of a big state and a lot of people, a lot of whom feel totally subsumed by the city. And I, I wonder how we take that forward if we're going to take the team game uh, in a larger scale, I guess, uh, outwards and upwards. Um, thanks, Steve. Thank you. Um, Darcy spoke about sister community relationships between um, Rotary here in Adelaide and Philippines. I've been speaking about sister city relations between City of Adelaide and City of Qingdao. But as an immediate outcome of the China trip, I have phoned up um, the new president of the local government association, Dave Burgess from the Riverland. And I said, Dave, why don't we set up a uh, sister council network? whereby we have a metropolitan council uh, partnering with a rural or regional council um, so that we can swap notes, swap learning, improve communication because there's not a great deal of communication between metropolitan councils and rural and regional and I think we can fix that, I think we can improve it. Um, my father came from Waichakawi which is a place near Tarawi on the way to Peterborough. Um, my cousins come from um, Kimber on the west coast uh, so I've got a great deep respect for uh, rural and regional South Australia and I think it's a wonderful place. Uh, and the challenges are different, um, but I think because councils are the closest level of government to the community and that they must remain, is that if we go into some kind of a partnering arrangement between councils right across the state, whereby every council partners with another, um, I think we can improve that. But the challenges are different and you're absolutely right. Yep. Rotarians and guests. Uh we had the pleasure of hearing Dave Burgess at Manham a few weeks ago. We've had the privilege of hearing the Lord Mayor speak, and I defy anyone not to share his vision for this great city. Would you please welcome, uh, sorry, please thank the Lord Mayor and the Lady Mayoress for being with us in the usual manner. I know you've got to go, but I'll give you a photograph.